Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of E2C Network Live, where we get together and we talk about what's going on in the world of the Auburn family spectrum. Always heavy on the sports here, but if it's orange and blue, it's what we do. We are all about the whole of the Auburn experience. On this live stream, though, we are talking about initial thoughts, reaction to the open practice and Auburn Fan Day uh, that just got done taking place within the last 30 minutes or so. The team has departed. Uh, the fans have started dispersing for the afternoon, and I just needed to come and take a quick breather <laughs> and catch my breath, cool down a little bit, uh, and dry off as well. And I thought it'd be fun to get together and just maybe uh, catch up with a few of you that might be online uh, and might want to talk about this overall with me. And just kind of, uh, if you had some impressions from what, if you were here, if you had some thoughts about it or questions that you uh, wanted to ask, that is fair game. Just something we're trying. You can tell we're in the car on the road. Not perfect. The Wi-Fi may be a little bit spotty. Who, who knows how Auburn Wi-Fi is, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, I keep saying Wi-Fi. Auburn's internet services usually work. But anyway, uh, fair game. Let's just talk about it, react to it, and, uh, don't be shy, ask questions, and drop comments in there as you'd like to. And also, as you're coming in the stream, please do make sure you smash that like button. And as we go throughout the show, if you want to check out some of the links in the description for the ways that you can help support what we do here on this channel. Uh, a couple of things that uh, I will start off by saying is that if you don't have an opportunity to come to an Auburn football game this year, an event like this is pretty crucial and important to have, at least the availability to have. I was talking to someone today at the event, and they were saying, you know, some of the people here I've been talking to, they said this is the only Auburn football that they're going to get this year, period. And so I think that that's, obviously that's kind of un unfortunate, but it's good that Auburn's kind of giving back in a way, giving some of those families who a, can't afford it, don't feel comfortable coming during everything that's going on right now, um, opportunity to be here and to check out uh, their Tigers. And this was pretty up close and personal, uh, seeing what things are doing. I mean, this isn't like sugar-coated. They were out there making some of the uh, units do uh, up-downs, which was right in front of me. It was pretty funny uh, to watch because I uh, I got a full like view of what, uh, what was going on there and things that were being said by some of the coaches and stuff like that. And, you know, they did a good job of blasting uh, music throughout the... Um, the practice session so you really couldn't hear a whole lot of the coaching but if something was wrong and if something was uh amiss you could definitely tell um when something like that was a little bit off um i'm trying to think about just it, big things that i took away I, I won't talk so much about the fan day experience unless you guys want to know about it um it really wasn't a whole lot to it but i'll talk about that maybe on another video or stream um, in terms of uh, people were asking me on social media today, what was the turnout? It's hard to grasp uh, numbers and turnout when everyone is so, 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 so spread out. Uh, and I do mean like spread out. We were supposed to be within these certain sections of these stands, which I understood it to be like right there in the middle on the alum or the, uh, I guess the visitor side, technically the student side. Um, people didn't abide by that and they weren't really enforcing it. Uh, there were some prime seats, the first part of this thing, right up at the top uh, of the lower bowl underneath the overhang where the shade was. That was, that was clutch for some people, unlike me. <laughs> so, um, so I would say at its peak, 10,000 people probably were here, if that, maybe. I feel like 10,000 is a fair assessment uh, with the, how spread out it was. The trouble was is there was so much off and on again rain that it kept pushing people away, keeping them from coming in and stuff like that. But in my mind, for something that lacks the allure of having, having a true autograph session, there's when I say true, there wasn't one, but of course you always got fans trying to stop the players and get them, and some of them did that. Um, that without that, you can understand why this wasn't such a popular event for a lot of people to attend. Um, but all that being said, I think a pretty decent turnout in my opinion, um, for what was thrown together and, uh, for being something completely different. And I know this has a longer name than just Auburn fan day, but it's just easier for me to call it fan day because <laughs> I, I can't, uh, 
that's a long marketing name that they used uh, for this thing. Uh, let's. So what we saw initially, I wasn't aware this is what's, what's going to happen. We saw them go through their practice for game day, meaning not just like the drill, the, the drills and the warm ups and the prep for making like getting out of the tunnel and stuff. They did all of that in front of us, which was kind of neat to see because I think a lot of us assume that they just know what to do. They just know to run out of the tunnel this certain way at this certain time. And I think that was kind of cool to see that they actually have to, and remind us, they have to go through these steps to figure out exactly the logistics of everything. Uh, Rob, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate it. He says, smash the like button. I agree. If you like this type of content, please do help us out by smashing it. Um, so they went through that prep, uh, a couple of drills, and that's it. it <laughs> I think it's Brad LaRondo is the uh, chief of operations with the guy announcing throughout the whole thing. He even says like, what you're seeing right now is not even practice. This is just us practicing our warmups for game day on Saturday. So it's kind of be funny when I'm there a week from now, I will have seen them gone through these reps to see all that stuff happen. Um, saw a lot of special teams, which is not a shock. You don't want to do a lot of and there's not a lot of installation for offense and defense that they're putting in at this point. It's more reps and practices and stuff like that. But there was a lot of reps and fine-tuning and kind of cleaning up of special teams, not just the actual action of kickoff returns, uh, coverage, punts, uh, things. But even just the basic movements and skills that go into that were part of uh, that. So we saw a ton of special teams. And they did have two separate sessions where we could do, uh, where we could see the offense versus the defense. Uh, I know a lot of you are begging me to answer the question, what's the quarterback situation look like? It was really hard for me to tell. The quarterbacks, unfortunately, were very far away from me for most of the practice. Um, it seemed like the majority of the reps went to TJ Finley, in my opinion. However, I don't think you should take that as a sign of things. I think that is simply trying to get your number two backup in a quarterback race a, enough reps to prove whether he needs to be the guy or not. Um, from what I could see, had a couple of good throws, also had a, a, a couple of mistakes, um, not necessarily a, an interception or anything like that, but just poor choices on progressions and stuff like that. So I really think that TJ was getting a lot of reps to really stake his claim and see if he can take the starting job from Bo Nix, but I will say Bo, and I mean this in the best possible way, looked very comfortable out there in my opinion. Uh, we also saw Demetrius Davis out there. That was really cool to see, just see the future of Auburn football out there participating. He got a lot of reps at the end, but he was going with the thirds. I mean, his wide receivers were guys I've never heard their name of, unfortunately. Sorry, walk-ons, but that's really what it was. So um, saw we even saw Grant Loy out there. So in order, you saw Bo, then you saw TJ. Grant Loy got some reps, and then... Um, Demetrius Davis got some reps. So I, I think it's clear. I know a lot of people are excited for Demetrius Davis and want him out there that he is not going to be the quarterback this year. That's just me. I could be wrong, but I just think that's going to be the case based on what I'm seeing. Uh, I would like to see, let me back up here. I got to keep, it's, it's always different trying to keep uh, all of these things straight. Um, the, cause when I normally do live streams, I'm doing it for my computer, much easier to process the comments on the side, but they're coming and going here on this thing. Let's see. Rob said, I would like to see Bo play first half and TJ play second half. Your thoughts in the game? Oh, okay. I, I get what you said. I was like saying, you want them to just flat out say one quarterback in the first. Okay. Uh, in Akron. Yes. No, my hope is and my expectation is that Bo's the starter. I want them to do so well that Bo didn't, but Bo does not need to play in the second half. And then Finley can go out there with some of the ones still and some of the twos and really show his stuff in real time. So that I agree with. That's what we should hope for. Will we get that? Probably not. you got to remember this is a first game, new regime, new system. Things are going to have to be worked out. They need reps. That Penn State game is barreling down the hatch. Got to get ready for that. So if Bo's the guy, got to get him reps. Got to get him in the offensive line and sync. So on one hand, I want that as much as you do, but I also want, if Bo's the guy, for him to be ready. Uh, somebody was asking uh, how the quarterbacks look, and I, I've kind of been answering that. Bas basically how you thought it would be. TJ's getting a lot of reps. I think they're trying to make sure he has every opportunity uh, to win the job, if it's his to win. Um, 
Demetrius got a lot of time with the third, so did Grant Loy. Um, we didn't see a ton of Bo, but there was really not a lot I could take away from this practice um, in terms of quarterback play. The, I actually had the defense a lot in front of me, so watching a lot of their individual drills and stuff like that I mentioned earlier, it was uh, Coach Eason who was really getting into the defensive line, guys. And I'm trying to remember, I've done so many social media things today. I'm trying to remember where I've said this and not. I, I don't think I want to question their heart, leadership, or anything like that, but they were having to do a lot of up-downs <laughs> on those drills. And you, you want that in your coach, but at the same time, it's kind of a little bit uh, concerning that that was going on. Um, I also, a little bit of a quick quick um, story here. Just a second ago, I had um, was it Carnell Williams and uh, Coach Bobo walk right in front of me right here, and they got in the same truck together. I guess they rode together today. Uh, so that kind of threw me off there for a second. I was like, hold on. <laughs> That's my guy. Uh, so unfortunately, I didn't go run over there and uh, get an autograph or anything like that. But literally, I mean, right next to me, it was Carnell Williams and uh, Bobo. Rob says, first two games, are you focusing on pass blocking and pass accuracy by Bo? I'm focusing on block on offensive line only. I know, I know, I feel like a broken record, and I know people are tired of hearing me saying this, but I'm focusing on everything the line's doing. If the line is fixed, a lot of Auburn's problems get fixed no matter who the quarterback is. Bo can't fix his problems if he doesn't have support on that side. So that's kind of, to answer your question, I would focus more on pass blocking. The accuracy will improve if he has the time and the confidence that he's going to be protected on that. Uh, I, was, I hated that the wide receivers were so far away from me during this practice because I would have really loved to have just seen it up close of them. Um, couldn't really see a lot of that. I'm trying to think of other big takeaways uh, from the practice session. I can't really think of things. Rob says the O-line scares him. I, I won't go as far to say they scare me. I just, I, I'm used to the, unfortunately, the way it's been. I, I hope that they can do better. I believe they can do better. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at on that. Let's see, we talked about defensive line having, having to do up-downs, quarterback play. Couldn't really see a lot of the running backs or wide receivers. Defensive backs, I could see some plays. Uh, who was it? I think it was Deshaun Miller had a wallop of a hit on what somebody in practice. They weren't hitting a lot, but when they did, he laid the wood on somebody at defensive back. Uh, what's your opinion on the season regardless of quarterback? Aiton, I'm roughly, I'm sorry, it's sweating in here. That's why I'm, I keep rubbing my face. I, I'm sitting at about eight and five on the season, t counting a bowl um, loss. That's kind of where I'm sitting at. Uh, I Depending on who you talk to, I've uh, kind of waffled. I've gone. I've gone as high as nine and three for regular season, um, but I've also been toying with going down to seven and five. I told most people that I've said this to. I said this is my initial prediction. Get back to me after the Penn State game. Then I'll have you a, a, a pretty solid opinion and where I feel comfortable making some bold statements or not about the rest of the season. Um, but all in all. Uh, it was sad to not have Coach Harson here today. Uh, that would have been fun to see him out there. Um, the coaches seemed to be obviously coaching him up well, but having a good time with it. It, it, it. The practice felt productive, yet loose at the same time, which was a good thing for us all to see there, where there's a business approach to it. But, you know, I think there's a, a chemistry maybe developing that is going to be very necessary going forward uh, the rest of the season. And uh, I think it just kind of showed. Um, Rob says, with our O-line center four guards, our running game should be legit. <laughs> uh, our running game should be legit regardless uh, with Tank Bigsby and Sean Shiver. Sean looks impressive. I, I Listen, I'm not going to talk bad about any of our running backs because they seem to be pretty solid. But Tank is good, but Sean just looks – he looks like he's on a mission to me this year, and I'm super excited. I mean, the way he practiced today in the drills, the way he just kind of – and he's always about that, right? He's just an intense little bowling, bowling ball of rage. So solid. 
uh, and I love that guy. That's, there's a reason I say shivers me timbers every time I see him, and I know that's not his name, but that's what I do. It's my thing. Let me have it. Um, but yeah. So I don't want to say that I'm going to do this, but I potentially might do another live stream the next day or so, kind of just breaking down this in full after we hear some other opinions about this. Uh, but this is just kind of my initial first thoughts and reaction from this. What was your takeaway from the whole thing? I think I, I just said it a second ago, Joe. By the way, Joe is a channel member and Booster Club member. Thank you, sir. If you want to be a Booster Club member or a channel member, you can check the links in the description or just hit the join button here. That's uh, all it takes is $1 a month. Um, my biggest takeaway was that this was a very business yet loose approach to practice. And I know that's a very vague bit. If you're, but if you're looking for an overarching thing, that's what I found. It was a, it was a good combo between focus and loose, uh, good looseness there, which is really what I was looking for. How about tank? How about tank? <laughs> Just as big as ever, just as solid as ever. Still got his speed. They weren't, um, uh, there wasn't a lot of hitting. There was more kind of making contact and not really bring it to the ground it kept a couple, except a couple of times. So it's not a lot you can take away from that. Um, I'm trying to think if there was any other big moments or things that you wanted. Uh, there was a big pass interference in the end zone, which was pretty funny to see. Uh, you missed the, you talking about the quarterbacks. Well, I won't rehash all of it again. If you don't mind, go back into the beginning of the live stream. There's nothing really new to talk about. Uh, Bose seems to be number one. TJ Finley, number two, though he did get a lot more reps today. I think that's them trying to give him every opportunity to take the job if he is the guy that needs to take it. Um, Grant Lloyd played. Demetrius Davis got the last reps with the threes or fours. Um, so it's, it's TJ and Bo. And I would say Bo looks pretty comfortable out there and looks pretty good. Um, didn't feel like a game feel it. Did it feel like a game feeling to you today? Not at all. <laughs> uh, this was this was somewhere between a day and a practice, which just a general practice, which I've never been able to attend before. Um, there was a at times a feel of a day there but it still wasn't. Um, so definitely not a game day feeling. Although it was nice to see people together when the band came out and did a, pe a pep rally with the cheerleaders and the tiger paws, that was really good. And that kind of made you feel that moment. And I'm sitting here right now. I mean, Jordan Harris in front of me, um, Donahue and why am I blanking right now? Rhodes, Kyle. Donahue and Heisman, I guess, are sitting right here in front of me, the intersection where Tiger Walk happens. And that, a week from today, what time is it? We will probably be doing the pep rally live if internet helps us uh, next week. So stay tuned for that. So it's a week away. Better get excited. I'm going to sign off here, but thank you guys so much for tuning in, uh, whether it was on social media today, here on YouTube. You guys mean the world to us and are really helping us make this something that that we can do for a long time. And I appreciate your support, even if it's just being here, smashing that like button or being a channel supporter by hitting the join button. We appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me for a little bit. Stay tuned. Much more to come in the week leading up to game day. War Eagle.